You're watching Cox Connections only on Cox 11. The Bureau of Justice reports that between 2003 and 2013, domestic violence accounted for 21% of all violent crime. In January of 2013, the annual homeless assessment to Congress reported that 36% of America's homeless were families with children. For 30 years, the Samaritan House has fostered personal safety, growth, and self-sufficiency in adults and their children through the freedom from domestic abuse and homelessness. Here to talk about these programs are Samaritan House Education and Outreach Coordinator Larissa Sutherland and Program Director Robin Gauthier. Thanks for being on the show today. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Robin, let me start with you. Um, obviously, you're doing great work here, but tell us more about how Samaritan House helps. Sure. Um, we have emergency housing for victims of domestic violence in homeless families. And we also have a very comprehensive victim advocacy program where we help victims who want to contact the police, make reports, and we help them go through the legal steps of the court system. And you don't have to be a resident of one of our housing programs to receive these victim advocacy services, which is why we're telling the community about them. So anyone who is in need can, can call? Absolutely. We have a 24-hour hotline that's available, and that's how you get in touch with us and get in touch with our victim advocates. So why? I think it may be obvious, but, but why is this work uh, that the Samaritan House is doing. Why is this work so important? Yeah, there has to be a safe and confidential location for victims to contact and victims to go. If in the middle of the night someone feels unsafe, something happens in their relationship, they could be in danger. So our victim advocates will do some lethality assessment with them and make sure their relationship, if it's too dangerous, that they have a safe place to go. And um, we'll continue to work with them for whatever their needs are. And you know, I guess most people will sit in the comfort of their homes and not realize that there are people in these situations. I mean, we're not talking about one or two people. You're, you're yeah. housing, on a, on a given night, what, what, what are some of the numbers? We're housing 100 people a night in our program and we're talking about 200 families a year. And 60% of these victims and homeless families are children. And so there needs a place needs to be a place for children to go to. In and there. You, you mentioned the confidentiality and how important that is. Obviously, being in a safe environment, but the confidentiality yes. as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, sometimes they don't want their perpetrators to know where they are, and they want a place to go where they can have some time to decide what to do, what next steps to take, and that's what we're here for. And and I guess there's a prevention component as well that you're trying to help prevent these kinds of things from happening in the first place. Is that also part of the work you're doing? Absolutely. Outreach and education is really important to prevent domestic violence from occurring. And, you know, when we have young men or boys or young children in our program, we always talk about prevention and we talk about healthy relationships. So things like that won't happen in the future. Mm -hmm. Loris, I understand you have a new PSA campaign. So how is it? How is that helping? Uh, we do have a new campaign. We're excited about it. It's called Faces, and it's a multimedia campaign. We have print ads and radio and television ads. And what it, we're doing with our ads is really um, encouraging people to look at Samaritan House differently uh, than maybe people's perception of us has been. We are, um, we've been a, a very strong emergency shelter program for 30 years, um, but a lot of people don't recognize that we have a lot of services in addition to emergency housing to help victims of domestic violence. Um, Robin mentioned our victim advocacy program, and that, that program is extensive. We have a lot of people who are in a, a bad situation, who may not need emergency housing, and who also may not know that we can help them. So. so so you, you, it's not just the housing that you can right. provide. You can provide other forms of assistance. Right. Our 24-hour crisis And people hotline. may not know that, and so right. they may not call. <laughs> exactly. Right. right. So the, those, those services are, are really important if you're going through a, a bad situation to have somebody to help you get through it from point A to point B. If someone needs help, and we, Robin, you kind of mentioned that, but Larissa, if you could maybe double-click on this, but if someone does need help, either housing or any other kind of assistance, how do they get in contact with the Samaritan? We have a 24-hour confidential crisis hotline, which is 757-430-2120. And that gives access to all of our programs, our housing programs, also our victim advocacy program. Um, and if you uh, need help just sorting through a domestic violence situation, we're also, we have a lot of resources online. 
at our website, which is www.samaritanhouseva.org. So we have education resources mm -hmm. there and information about our programs. So I, I guess another question, because I, I've heard a statistic where most people in these situations don't call, they don't reach out for help. First off, is that is that a true statement or? I, I think it's a, a very brave call. It's a, it's a tough call. And is. so people, there's some people who are in those situations who don't call. Right. So, so what happens if, if, if you know someone who's in a situation like that? Can you call on somebody's behalf or, or how, how what, what do you do if you find those kind of situations, you know? You, you can call on someone's behalf to talk with our intake coordinators on our hotline to get wow. some advice on how to communicate with the person who is in the situation. It's always best if the person in the situation can call us mm -hmm. so that we can do direct safety planning um, and direct counsel if necessary and give that person all of the options that they need. So, but it, it doesn't hurt for anyone to call our, our hotline if they're interested in information on how best to respond to a friend or family member. Right. Robin, let me go back to you, and, and we'll have, uh, again, we'll show that, uh, those contact information, the hotline and the, uh, and the, the website uh, for people to reach. But Robin, there are probably people also listening to this who, who may not be in this situation, but clearly want to do something to help. Um, what, first off, what kind of help do you need, and then how could they go about helping? Yeah, well, two of, the, two of the important things is, you know, we're a nonprofit like everyone else struggling for funds. And so if someone would like to donate um, financial assistance, they can go on our website, um, www.samaritanhouseva.org, O-R-G. And they can make a financial donation or have a fundraiser of some sort, get family and friends involved to help us. And then the other thing they can do is volunteer their time. Um, we are operating uh, with a service enterprise model and we're trying to expand our outreach and our services to people in the community. And if you are someone who wants to mentor a family and help a child or answer our hotline or deliver groceries, um, please call us and get involved. And obviously that uh, monetary donations are great, but even doing that is just as valuable. Absolutely. Well, listen, thank both of you for being here uh, and thank you more importantly for what you're doing to help uh, people in need in our community. Thanks for having me. When we return, Monday Madness, Turn It Up Thursday, Fun Friday, and Super Saturday. These are just some of the fantastic programs offered by the Southside Boys and Girls Clubs. We'll hear about them when we come right back with more Cox Connections.